at 87.9% penetration, United States is amongst the leaders in internet usage. We went from internet traffic of 100 gigabytes per year in the year 1992 to 100 gigabytes per second by the year 2002. This internet traffic is estimated to reach 3.3 zettabytes by the year 2021. With that data, I have to assume the majority of you in this room are regular internet users and could very well relate to the pain and frustration of losing an internet connection. <laughs> Without internet, it's almost as if the world comes to a standstill. So could you even imagine today a world without internet at all? Let's explore it for a few seconds. If there is no internet, there is no Facebook. If there is no Facebook, you will not be able to instantly upload any picture or instantly do a status update to let your 500 plus friends know that you have reached safely in Timbuktu. Certainly, you will not be able to deposit a check sitting at your dining table or make a trip, or reserve a trip, I should say, from the comfort of your bed late at night. Or worse, you may actually have to turn back on your way to work to see if the garage door was closed or not. <laughs> Needless to say, internet has completely transformed our lives. Today, there are mega businesses like Facebook, Expedia, Google, and so many more, the likes of which did have become everyday common household names, like it used to be Sears, for example. Except these businesses did not even exist 20 to 30 years ago. Indeed, internet has completely transformed how we conduct business, how we process information, so much so how even we socialize and interact with each other. Having no boundaries, geographic or social, Internet has even transformed the way we interact. Oh, so internet has even transformed the way we have self-identity or security. So what is this internet? Where did it come from? Where is it taking us? Is it something to be afraid of? Simply put, internet is a cable that runs around the world connecting different computers to form a network of computers, allowing these computers to be able to talk to each other using a common protocol. Derived from the phone networks, internet was conceived in 1969. But unlike the phone networks, internet uses packet switching networks, where it allows a data stream to be broken down into smaller packets and allowing each data packet to transfer using a potentially a different route, and all these packets to be able to reassemble, recompile at the destination to form the original message, much like the transporter in Star Trek. However, internet offered a much more reliable and a scalable mode of communication. Therefore, hence, it is what, where it is today from the popularity standpoint. In the 1990s, internet became more adapt, the adaption of the internet became more popular on the backs of worldwide, internet, uh, worldwide web. As more and more computers patched into the internet and the availability of personal computers became more popular, internet, the commercialization of the internet was in inevitable. Hence began the start of the internet revolution that became more prevalent and transformed the world much faster than the first and second industrial revolution combined. With the advent of the communications, with the cell phones and the, cell and the cellular network, internet became more prevalent and became more accessible, now requiring no wired connections to the devices. Internet people evolved from asynchronous communication to synchronous conversations. Just as the internet was the disruptive agent for the technology, 
Internet of People emerged to be a disruptive force for our societies. For instance, today, no one, like an emerging, emerging artist, does not require an agent to promote them. They could self-promote themselves on YouTube. Hence, making every member of our society emp feeling empowered on the backs of the Internet. Internet, indeed, was the catalyst for globalization, or even for many social and political revolutions around the world. By the year 2000, automation and robotics were prevalent and had advanced enough so that now we could program machines to be able to network with each other and to be able to uh, talk to each other to complete complex tasks. Now, humans dream of creating a self-learning machine was becoming a reality, the likes of which was portrayed as Johnny Five in the movie Short Circuit. Except, unlike Johnny Five, the modern machines do not have to sit in front of a TV all night long to learn and expand their knowledge base. Instead, they simply have to patch into the internet to be able to expand their knowledge. Humans have an age-old desire to forge gods, to be able to create a, like a perfect being, an all-knowing creature, the likes of which that was portrayed as Lilu in the movie Fifth Element. Well, with the advent of machine learning, that dream was also fulfilled. Today, machines patched into the internet could actually continue to evolve themselves by learning on their own data patterns. And as they patch into the internet, the, the, the ecosystem is expanded, so is their knowledge base. Now, in comparison to the human beings, what was lacking was machines' ability to sense. Well, no more. Today, the advancements in sensor technology is not only much advanced, but also very cheap, allowing the manufacturers to introduce these sensors into everyday household items. Today, the, the introduction of sensors, cameras, microphones into everyday household items is allowing the machines to be able to touch, feel, listen, speak, or even relate and communicate. Today's intelligent agents like Siri, Cortana, Alexa, Google Home are finding their way into our everyday lives. These agents connected to the central computers who are managing them, these central computers are almost as if gods. They are omnipresent, they are omniscience, and they are omnipotent. And often we are ready to put our trust into these agents and gods just as we would put our trust in real God. So are we up against some new gods? Should we be concerned? I, for one, believe there is no need to be concerned because we have not even reached our potential. There are much, many more advancements that have yet to come. So, for instance, the term Internet of Things has already been expanded to Internet of Everything by, Google, by Cisco. So, whereas the Internet of Things is connects machines to other machines and to the machines to the internet. Internet of everything brings data and process into the equation. The paradigm presented by internet of everything where conventional in the paradigm presented by the internet of everything, the conventional contributors like people and machines become the contributing agents to provide inputs, whereas the differentiating agents like data and process become the outputs, and hence to converting that input into action. And that is the power of Internet of Everything. For instance, a simple thermostat at home can be connected to the Internet, and it would allow you to, or it will allow the 
uh, thermostat to automatically set the home's temperature and humidity based on the area's forecast. But the same thermostat could also advise the homeowner of the optimal settings looking at the area's homes of the same size and in that geographic location. Imagine your car being able to, not only by talking to the other cars, not only able to predict the slowdown up ahead, but also have the ability to reset and reschedule your appointments into the, uh, based on the predicted slowdown. This is indeed the power of information to generate actions in the world of Internet of Everything. For the first time in our history, we as individuals are not limited by our own individual imaginations. The journeys are not defined by our destinations. And time no longer is a, is a factor in terms of our dictating our terms. Internet has indeed transformed the very basis of problem solving. For instance, when some people did not like the conventional uh, banking system, they looked to the internet and collaborated with the inter on the internet to be able to form the new electronic cash system, independent of central banks or regulations imposed by governments. Hence came the ad advent of Bitcoin and blockchain in 2009. So would the uh, future be simply more of the same, or is it something more? Is this something more, AI enslaving humans, just the way it was predicted or showcased in Matrix, Terminator, or AI, the movie? Accepting my personal limitations of even understanding the current state, I simply and humbly refer to Ray Kurzweil, the, the brilliant mind of today, who had accurately predicted the fall of Soviet Union and also the spread of internet, and also the fact that computers will beat humans at chess. According to him in his book, How to Create a Mind, Kurzweil suggests that the brain, brain's neocortex has 300 million um, pattern recognizing circuits and a computer could be developed based on this design to be able to create artificial intelligence and looking at the law of accelerating returns he argues that the hardware to be able to do that computation will be ready within, within a few decades so according to him by the year 2029 Artificial intelligence will be just as smart as we are. And by the year 2035, artificial, we will be able to plug in our brains into our synthetic, so our organic brains into the synthetic neocortex, into the cloud, to be able to, to be seemingly more smarter. And again, the synthetic neocortex being in the cloud and subject to law of accelerating returns would grow much faster and much quicker. Hence, reaching the state of singularity where technology is much advanced than humans by the year 2045. Now to answer the question, would AI enslave humans in the future? I naturally asked that question first to Siri on my, on my phone. Well, Siri's simple answer was, hello, Javad, I do not understand. <laughs> and then, by me asking this question again and again, Siri bombarded me with lots of documents, a lot of links, and tried to confuse me. So naturally, I went back to Ray Kurzweil again. According to Ray, he offers a, very, a foolproof plan to keep AI beneficial. He believes today as a global community, we have more consensus on values like democracy, liberty, tolerance, and compassion. So the plan should be to be able to integrate these core values into our societies today 
so that the future societies are largely, which, which are largely dominated by artificial intelligence and where artificial intelligence is intimately integrated with ourselves, it will emerge from today's societies. So if we embody these values into our societies today, the future societies will be based on these values also. What could go wrong? Thank you.